Hello, all my friends. Hello, there's Lisa and Shelly, always rejoicing. Beth, hello, Gretchen. Hello, everyone. I saw Lori is here. Let's see, lots of our friends. Okay, so I got a request in an email because we mentioned last week um, I did a little request live and I got another email for a request. And this is a really cool one. Um, I thought it was a cool request. And so I'm going to share that with you guys tonight. Now, I will preface this with saying that this is just um, how I do my cards. And of course, you can put your own spin on it and do whatever. But the request was for how do you arrange florals on your cards? And it can be a little bit intimidating sometimes if you don't know how to, you know, put them together and do this, that, and the other thing. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through kind of my thoughts uh, for that. And I have some cards to, um, that we've done in the past that I'm going to show you and kind of my thought process behind that. And then I'm going to walk you through and put together a couple of cards step by step. And so her request was, how do I, I have trouble arranging florals on my card. And especially like if it's a big floral, and then if you have a, a flower that has a stem with it. And so this can go for your die cuts. So let's say any of your lovely layers, or you could apply this with stamped images as well. And so I'm going to go down to my desk view, and then we're going to start out. So this is just a blank card base. And so when you look at your blank card base, this is where if you're looking at it like this, it can get a little bit intimidating. Like you have this blank canvas. Now, what do I do with this? Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness. Jen still does not have her Christmas cards done. Well, you can just craft away or whatever. And we will, um, I'll craft, you can craft, we'll chat, all the things, okay? All right, let's see. There's Crystal, Mary, hello, hello. Hockey Spaz, hello. Okay, okay. And Hockey Spaz says, I copy other people's florals because I'm bad at it myself. Okay, well, I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks here of some things that I like run through my mind as I'm doing this, okay? So I'm going to start out with, let me kind of get my little pieces together here is I have two different sets of die cuts. So I have our Lovely Layers Pansy die set. So it comes with the big flower. It comes with two different leaves. Yep, the two leaves. And then it comes with the little bud, right? And so if you're looking at your card here, and it, as I mentioned here, this is just kind of what goes through my mind as I'm putting a card together and arranging everything. If you look at the whole card here as your blank canvas and you just start kind of doing this number, you know, whatever, that it's a lot to fill up. So I always think of my flowers or my critters or my stamped images, anything like that. They kind of need a grounding place. They need a little place to rest. And so that's where your layering dies or even just cutting some pattern paper, even if you just use a simple rectangle, that's where it's going to help you. And it's going to kind of shrink down this big, huge canvas a little bit. Well, I say big, huge, but open canvas and that white space, or if you're using colored cardstock, it's going to kind of shrink it down a little bit to where you're thinking in a smaller spot and you can kind of arrange it a little bit better. Now, another thing that I like to keep in mind is... Um, visually having odd numbers. So if we look here, we've got one, two, three, four things here on our card. So to remedy that and to make an odd number, I'm just going to add another leaf. You could add another little tiny flower or a little bud or, you know, whatever you have. So um, I'm going to show you how I would arrange a card or give you some ideas and I'll, I'll kind of show you some things as I put this all together. So for my resting place, 
I have pulled out my dies. Let me get a uh, let me get situated here. I have pulled out some of our layering frames dies. And as I mentioned before, you could use just cut rectangles. You could use your sweet stacks rectangles. This goes for oval dies, circles, whatever shape you want to use. But that's going to give you that smaller canvas and a little resting place for your um, little bouquet to rest. Okay. So uh, I am using, and I just like thumbed through all my dies and just picked out just something. And this is, this is, Lisa's going to have to tell us. I need to put my names on everything. I'll probably get fired. Lisa, can you put in the chat which one of our layering frames this is? Um, this is what I'm using. And instead of using the whole set, you can see that I have only cut this, um, the next to the largest one, just as kind of my little resting place. And this is what we're going to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. And then as a little pop or a little bit of pizzazz, I'm just doing gray and white gingham paper. So you could use any kind of pattern paper or anything that you want. And this is how I kind of walk through this is, you know, you can lay out your pattern paper. I've cut it down slightly because I like to have that uh, margin in there. And let's see here, we can go here so we can like visit with one opulent layering frames. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to kind of walk you through like what I'm my crazy crafty brain here. And then we have this smaller piece. And that's a little bit of schmutz there. Let's flip it around because we're going to cover that up. And I normally will put my big flowers or like a little swag or a bouquet or uh, whatever you want to call it. I usually go for like right down in here because then I've got space up here for my sentiment. I've got some little white space, which is also visually appealing to have a little bit of white space, but you could switch it around. If you wanted to make your big, you know, bouquet up here, we could do it right up here. If we wanted to, let's say, have a big flower here, like so, that's in a three. We could stop there add a big sentiment and that's beautiful just like that. If you want to fill it out, you could do like the little bud and do something, you know, like this down in here. And I would probably add, oh, something right here, like this little crossover right here bothers me. If it doesn't bother you, you could switch it up. But you could add, you know, a little bow of twine or a little something right there. You could even put your like a sentiment or something right here. Um, you could put your sentiment across here, but you could do it like this and have your florals split and have them kind of fill out your little landing spot like that. Today, I am going to my idea was kind of to do it like so. So I've got my lovely layers pansy and that's going to kind of be my big wow factor like star of the card right there. And then I can kind of start kind of nestling things around and the leaves have a shape. You can see here where this one is kind of curving up this way. So I'll probably, you know, tuck this one kind of right down in here. This one is curving back up the other way. So I'll probably do something like so. This one is the same as this one. So let's kind of make it look like show it a little different. So it looks like we're getting two different leaves here. We can kind of nestle this around. A lot of times too, when I have a little bud or a stem or something like that, I will trim off the stem um, if I need to, to kind of poke it and tuck it in. But if you look here, we've got one, two, three, four, five things. 
I've got room for my sentiment right here. This is probably how I would use the Lovely Layers Pansy. I would probably do something like this and have all this white space here that's kind of nice and clean. It shows off that layering frame. And then it, I, I have nice space there for my sentiment. You could also put your sentiment and die cut it and put it down here and leave all that white space open. So let's see here. Lovely layers. It's like a real flower arranging 357. Yes, Bo, it is. And, you know, the same thing works for in any kind of artwork uh, or any kind of, you know, artsy thing that you're doing. You kind of look around like when we're all adding our little gems our sequins and, and things like that, st stuff like that. Now, you could also push all this and have it, you know, more in the center if you wanted to do it that way. It really is like whatever floats your boat, right? However you want to do that. Um, I like to kind of nestle it and have it flow. And then I'm going to have space for my sentiment too. So let's go ahead and let's build this out. And let's do that. And before I get too far, I know that I want to stay. I'm going to stamp directly on to that. Uh, layer from that opulent layering frames. I'm going to stamp directly on that. And then the next card, I'm going to do the die cut sentiment. Okay. So I'm just dotting my glue. I'm going to add this down and then put it on here like so. And now we've got our pattern paper on there. Let's make sure we kind of shimmy that around. OK, and then before I get too far, I do need to stamp my sentiment. So I'm just going to stick this in. I'm going to put it up here so I can kind of hit my sticky mat. And I'm going to put it kind of right up in here because I know that that's where um, I want to fill a little bit of that white space. All right, so I have my sentiments. This is Inside Kindness. Again, I went through my little basket of stuff that I really should be putting away over here and just randomly went through and chose a sentiment set. So let's see here. I could do any of this. I think I'm going to do this Life is Tough, but so are you. It's kind of going to fit, and I like to do this number. I like to leave it on there, kind of hold my sentiments up to kind of where I want to fill that space. And you can see that this size sentiment is going to be awesome. This We Rise by Lifting Others, that would be a nice one to fit that space. And you can kind of look like this just wanted you to know that what a blessing you are to me. That's a great sentiment, but it really is not fitting in with like that big, huge floral plus my little landing spot layer that I have going on here. So you can kind of hold up your sentiment sets and kind of decide, um, you know, what's going to fit that space the best. Now, if you have a big, huge sentiment or a bigger one that you just have to use and you just, um, you know, you love it and you want to use that one. Maybe that's one that you do a big, beautiful floral on the front of your card, but then you stamp or, or die cut your sentiment, add that to the inside. So there's lots of different ways that we can, um, we can do this, right? Okay. Now I'm going to stamp this in dusty concord. So I'm going to pull in the color of my pansies. And I like to do this with my oxide inks. You could use black if you want to. Whatever is kind of floating your crafty boat today. And I'm just going to lightly press this here. Let's see here. Um, doing laundry. Doing laundry is relaxing, says always rejoicing. Okay, so always rejoicing. Do you want to come to my house and do my laundry for me? Because laundry is so not relaxing to me. Like Lisa and I talk about our piles of uh, mountains of laundry that are clean. They need to be hung up, but 
that is just not on the agenda. Okay, so now I've got my my nice purple sentiment here. I'm just going to leave that up there. I usually have to make myself um, do the laundry by like putting on a TV program or something like that to sit and just do. Okay, now if we want to spice this up a little bit, we could raise it up with some um, adhesive foam, some foam dots, whatever. I think I'm just going to go, we're going to go easy peasy tonight. Let's just add some liquid. And I've got a little bit of schmutz on the end here. So let's get that off. And I may need to open my glue up again. Let's see here. And I'm going to look up as I'm doing this. I'm going to see what all of you, I hate the laundry. I know Lisa, I know Lisa and I just 30 minutes ago, we're talking about having to do laundry. Sure. I love to do laundry. Oh my gosh. Like I like when it's all done, but, and thank goodness, like, my daughter is 20. So obviously like she does all her laundry and my husband is picky. So he does his laundry. Um, and, uh, I do my own and my husband and I kind of tag team our 10 year olds laundry. Um, but he's not far off from learning how to do his laundry. Okay. Is that schmutz right there? Maybe not. Okay, so here we go. We've got our pretty little sentiment in purple, so everything's going to coordinate. Now let's kind of get busy with our floral here. Let me see if I can't find, oh, here we go. Let me reach around. Okay, so I'm going to pop up my main flower. This is going to do two things. It's going to add a little bit of dimension, but it's also going to give me space to poke all the other good stuff in there. Okay, so I'm going to add this about right. I kind of want this little corner right here just to kind of barely hang out. So we're going to put that down. And then the next thing that I'm going to add is the little um, bud. You could put it up here. That would actually be really pretty like so because it's kind of, see how it's kind of nestling and it's kind of highlighting the little sentiment there. It's almost like it would be like when you add your gems or your pearls to kind of highlight around the sentiment, that little bud is kind of doing the same thing. It's kind of pointing you towards your sentiment. You can kind of put it, you know, down in here like so. I kind of like it up there and that even wasn't even the, in the game plan, but let's do that. I am going to trim just the end off of that a little bit. So it doesn't stick up quite as much. And I'm going to pop this little guy up as well. So I'm going to pop it right down in here. Right in there. And it's kind of pointing up towards that. Almost like a little arrow kind of nestled there. There we go. And then I'm going to take one of the leaves that are pointing up that direction as well. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now with my leaves, I only like to add the adhesive down towards the stem because I like to curl or kind of poke up. Um, I'm even going to poke it. No, I'm not going to poke it down there. I'm going to put it right in here. We're going to nestle it in. And then I'm going to hold it down there where that glue is so it can uh, kind of stick on there. Directing the eye to the sentiment. Exactly. It's directing the eye to the sentiment. Just like, and we'll kind of talk about it uh, here in a minute and on the next card. It uh, That's why you'll see a lot of people who use their gems and their pearls and they'll, they'll kind of dot them around the sentiment a little bit. That's kind of directing the eye and focusing the eye, adding just a little bit of something up there to the sentiment. Okay, so I've kind of curled up that leaf a little bit. Now let's play with these other two leaves. And I'm going to use liquid adhesive on these as well. And only down towards the stem, I'm going to use this one first and kind of add here. And I'm going to hold that down. I can't lie. It's hard to be inspired when you have lost someone. Oh no. I try to make a few sympathy cards to have on hand. Another card. 
Yeah, Kelly. Thank you for teaching basic skills. I really, oh, you're welcome. And this is something, this was a really good question. I really liked that email because it's something that I don't think that card makers um, and people who do videos think about a lot because we just go, I shouldn't say like through the motions, but we, it's something that's almost becomes automatic. We don't really think about it a whole lot. And so it really made me sit down and think about like, okay, what are the steps that I take when, you know, building a floral card? Okay, we've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to add another little leaf. I don't know if I want to trim it and add it down here or trim it and add it up here. Let me look at this for a second. Okay, so let's look at it. Um, and this is what I do too, like visually, you can kind of shimmy things around, move them around and see like, where do you want it to go? And see, I like it down here. Do you see how that nestles and it's more visually appealing right down here than it is up here? Do you see how the direction up here, it looks funny? You could even probably trim it and put it right up in here, like underneath that big flower. And then we would have one here and we'd have that little nestled thing right here. So let me look. Let's see if I can poke it down in there enough to kind of get a visual of what that would look like. So you could even nestle it down in there and have that little bud kind of coming up that way. I think I honestly like it more down here. So I'm going to kind of stick with that. So, but it's just lots of options. You can kind of do, you know, whatever you're feeling. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So I'm going to tuck this in and I'm going to trim just a hair off down here because I don't want him to stick out the other side of this pansy. So I'm going to put it down here and these are going to kind of be nestled right in there like that. So I'm just holding that down to let that glue attach. I like it at the bottom too. Yeah. You can move things around and just kind of, um, you know, see where you want everything to go. Okay. I like how we've got this, kind of oval like moon like crescent moon shape here they're nestled around the sentiment we still have like nice white space like everything's not just super busy and then when I finish with especially my big lovely layers flowers like this I'll go back and hold the center like this because just like the leaves when I put glue just on the bottom of the stem. I do the same thing when I connect my flowers. I've only added adhesive like where they connect right in the center because I like to go back and I like to curl up some of these little petals. And so I'm going to be able to curl them just a hair um, that way, do you see what a difference that makes? So it's not smushed flat like a pancake. Now, this is going to go through the mail. It's going to get smushed like this. But when the recipient pulls it out, it's still going to have a little bit of the bend in it. It's not going to smush all the way back down like flat paper. That's a per personal preference to me. So I like to kind of bend these up, give them a little bit of shape, a little bit of curl, just like I did, you know, both of these leaves. I can do the same thing here. And then everything is not just flat, like flat paper. Okay. So card number one, I'm not going to add any other embellishments onto this one. I think this one's pretty. It's simple with the simple um, sentiment. This again, you guys were mentioning in the comments um, about sympathy cards. I, it, I was actually on the hunt for sympathy sentiments because this is a really good um, 
like with using florals and stuff to have sympathy cards. So this would be a great sympathy card and easy and simple just to put together. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this one aside and I'm gonna pull out my stuff for the next card. Now I'm using a different flower and here's the, the pansy die set with the layering guide right there. This time I'm gonna use a stemmed um, die from our lovely layers wildflowers. You could use a stamped sentiment. You could do whatever. And let me show you here. So here's the cards that I pulled out. So these are just some simple examples for flowers that have stems. So you could hang it off the bottom. And this, this is the same thing is going to go for a die cut flower as would your stamp flower. So you can hang it off the end, trim off the end. You know, here we go with our little pearls kind of highlighting that sentiment. Okay. Here is one in a little pot. So if you have a little vessel or a little something to put your stemmed flowers in, you could do it just like the little amaryllis here. Um, and then I pulled out my deer. This is just a good, and see here, you see I love the, the resting places, layers, smaller canvases, you know, bringing it down into smaller areas. Same thing with the little deer. So we've used our decorative star layering frames here, cut it down into smaller layers, and then add, made a resting place for the deer. Made the resting place out of the little pine and things like that. A spot for him to go. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. I'm using the Lovely Layers Wildflowers. Let me pull them out here. And I'm doing the exact same layers as we did on the last card. But because it's a different floral, we're going to get a different look. Okay, so I have cut just this little wildflower, which is this little guy right here. And they're really super simple to put together. You can see that there's the little poppy. There's like a bluebell looking type flower. And then there's this little guy right here. That's easy peasy. All right. So I'm going to start here. And let's say, so let's start with a blank card again. So we've got our big blank canvas. All right. And if you see, you can add that there, but you can see where to me, this is like, um, it needs something smaller. It needs something to bring kind of the focus in. It needs something to be its little home, its little resting spot, right? Okay, so we could start with our pattern paper. And you could put it on here just like so. Trim off the end. I'm going to hold my finger here. And that is adorable just like that. Add a really pretty sentiment, just like, let me find it, just like the amaryllis right here. Add a pretty little sentiment, add some little pearls or little embellishments, whatever you want to add. And that could be really sweet and really simple, just like that, especially for maybe a sympathy card or something like that. Because, um, you know, it's just nice and it's simple and it's pretty. Um, I'm going to add some little pearls up in here later, but we'll do that. But I'm going to do exactly like what we did with the other card with the same little resting place. So if you wanted to mass produce a bunch of cards, you could do that. Just like this with the amaryllis, you could stamp your amaryllis right on here and hang it off the end of your layer just like that and color it if you wanted to do that. Okay, so this little guy, I'm not even going to trim him off. This opulent frame layer is going to act as um, my little container almost for this little flower. Let me see. Let's see. I need to look up how to make 
Prills. I'm happy you're showing this. I tend to overthink my cards. I love this paper. I like A7. I have lots of room to write in. Yes. It needs a base. Yes. Okay. So Rachel is saying the same thing I did. Like when you hold it up to like a blank um, card base, uh, it's got a lot of open space. However, let me tell you this, and this may be like too much information. However, if you're going to do multiple flowers, that's where you may like, let's say we wanted to do all three of these stemmed flowers. That's where you could get away with not maybe not having this layer, but maybe just having this layer. And then you've got like one and then two and then three, and then maybe having like a little bouquet like this, maybe tie a little twine, and then you've got your little bouquet like that. Does that, I hope that is all making sense. Purple is my favorite color, so loving these. I never use purple. That's why I did this too. I love the wall. I like they always turn out so pretty. Let's see, even a little ink blending on the back. Yes, and Barbara, I was gonna say that. You know, your resting place, that is, I'm so glad that Barbara brought that up. Your resting place doesn't need to necessarily have to be layers of paper. You can use a, a stenciled background. And there's a lot of people that do like a halo of ink blending, like right back here. And that's your resting place. Or let's say you take a stencil and you do some kind of paste whether it's just a white uh, texture paste, and then that is your resting place. Um, there's so many different ways, but if you'll notice, if you'll go on Pinterest and pull up uh, floral handmade cards, you'll notice probably most of the time, whether it's uh, paper layers, if it's a stenciled ink blended background, um, texture paste. There's some kind of little area that people are making as the resting place. I'm calling it the resting place for lack of a better word for their flowers, for their florals. For example, and I've given this card away. The card we did, I think I've still got the picture up here. Let me show it. The card we did for Kelly's class. Okay, do you see here um, for our florals? Kelly used um, a potted amaryllis. She used that basket as her resting place. If you'll notice in the background, and it's kind of hard to see on these photos, but she's got a little bit of splatter back there. And see how she's got everything kind of nestled um, around. So the basket and all that stuff was kind of her nesting place, have a little bit of those sparkly splatters there, and then everything else just kind of goes around there. All right, let's see here. Um, I'm iffy about wax seals. How do they hold up to mailing? Uh, I'm going to use hot glue instead. It depends on where you want to put your wax seal. Um but that's all like a whole different ball game. I'm okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to shut up talking here and I'm going to get to putting this little card together. So I'm going to do this one down. I'm going to make this one a little bit different. I'm going to do my pattern paper. But um, as Barbara mentioned, like there's so many different ways that you can do a little resting place or a little, um, it like highlights the floral. It adds interest to the background. There's a lot of different ways that we can do that, right? With our craft supplies. Okay. Now I'm going to add my flower on here. Let me see here. And I'm going to about like so. So I'm going to use a little foam dot back here. And I don't need a whole one. Just one about like that. And then my liquid adhesive, I'm going to put just like just a dab right here towards the stem. 
And then let's see here. And then I'm going to go right about here. I want it to hang off the top, off the bottom. I'm going to pinch the leaves down where I added the adhesive. Padded mailer. Yes. Um, I don't know if you're going to put the wax seals on the outside of your card. You can, we have those double-sided adhesive little things that um, you could do like that. Okay, now taking my little thing and I'm just going to add some twine here. And this is just white twine that has a little bit of a silver, let me see if I can get this to work here, a little bit of a silver metallic um thread through it and I'm going to put this on before I glue it down so you could use twine whatever just to add just a little bit of something right in here and I'm going to hold this down just like that with my tweezers to have like an extra hand pull it just a little bit Pull that out, and now I can kind of get my little ribbon here a little bit more tamed down, a little bit smaller. I probably didn't make, need to make those so long, but okay. Now, what did I do? Here we go with my big old roll of foam. So I'm going to flip this one over. And I don't really like this new foam tape, but it doesn't tear as easy as the old one did. I'm going to put that right over the top. Just like so. Put my extra over there. And then we can add this on. Okay, so I'm going to add it right. Try to eyeball it. Right about there. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. So now let's look at sentiments. I'm going to use the same sentiment set. I've got a piece of scrap paper in here. But this time I'm going to use, and let's do the same thing here. So we could go with a bigger sentiment um, right in there, throw kindness around, I like the love us, kind people, your friendship means the world to me. Let's see here. There, you're the reason. I like this one. You're the reason I smiled today. So let's do that one. You can tell that I'm kind of walking you through as I wing it, right? Okay, now instead of stamping in purple this time, which I could, this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out the gray from the pattern paper and I'm going to stamp in Lost Shadow. And I'll probably have to stamp it a couple of times. Let's see, great cards. Thank you. Let's see if this is going to be dark enough. One, two, three. Let's do four for good measure. There we go. And then that's going to blend in with our paper. So let's close that. And now I need to find my die. Here we go. And then I'll show you guys like Kelly showed us the other day in our class. If you have trouble, like you get your dies and they're like this, if you have trouble finding the, um, the die that matches your sentiment, flip it over upside down and then hold it up like this 
And do you see how that stamp right there fits right in that die? That way you don't have to figure out what goes with what. Kelly Taylor taught us that in our class. When was that? A couple of weeks ago? A week or so ago? And then that is easier to find your coordinating die. And I usually just um, kind of puzzle piece them all together and trying to figure out what goes in there. Okay. So pause while I find my little bitty buzz cutter. Let me just put a light over here. All right, let's see here. Another great tip, write the sentiment on the card. Uh, yeah, there's a, I saw, um, who is that? I think it's Carol, one of our design team members. She does that as well. She writes them all on there. I'm, pro I'm too lazy. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm probably too lazy. I'm too lazy to do that. There we go. All right, let's get this little guy all cut out. My desk is a mess. There we go. And it's even a little off, but what are we going to do? All right, let's go here. Now, I think I'm going to tuck this like right in there. And let's do, let's just do good old liquid adhesive. And I'm going to place it right down on that twine. And I'm going to place that there. And then I've got this one I'm going to zhuzh up a little bit. So we've got the twine. We've got the... Um, sentiment there and let's do a couple of pearls because there's a center to this flower but I'm going to use pearls instead and I'm going to go with matching the gray and the silver here and so I don't think I want this like super sparkly silver I may go with like one of these more matte looking pearls. So I'm going to do that in the center. I think I'm going to do this darker one and I'm going to go one because we're going to do odds again. And let's do two. And I don't think I want another, a big one. Let's do another small one right up in there. And there we've got that. Let's see if we're sticking down here. There we go. And I don't think I'm going to put any more pearls. I think I'm going to leave that. I like our white space here. I can do a little bit of a lift. So the leaves are not just flat. And there we go. All right. So let's go one and two. So they're similar, but not exact. What do you guys think? Let's see here. Those tweezers are a game changer. Totally a game changer. They're like an extra hand. Yay bling, says Bo. Yes. All right. Let's see here. Very pretty. Elegant. Okay. So I hope that this helps a little bit with, and I know that this is not like the end all be all. And of course I can't even find, there they are. End all be all about like floral cards, right? But you can see here where similar like little ideas, like hang it off the end, put it in a container, have a little resting place. So I hope that this helps. Let's see, you can make a set of these for a gift. You could totally make a set for a gift, especially like the wildflower die set, because there's three different types of flowers in that die set. So you could do, you know, a set of three cards and have three different little wildflowers on there. You could do a set of six cards and have, you know, one of each and change up the colors. There's all kinds of things um, that you could do with that. Let's see. I'm going to mark this on my save. Oh, thank you, Bo. It did help. Okay, good. Great cards. They're not overdone. Yep, not overdone. 
easy peasy. You're not doing a whole ton of like extra die cutting and extra um, stuff. I cut one extra leaf out of that, of that die set. And then I just cut one flower. And I started out all with white paper. White paper is easier for me sometimes because you just die cut it and you got cut it out of um, one color cardstock instead of digging through and finding all different colors. And then I didn't even ink, I didn't even pull out my inks. I used my dirty brushes. And a lot of you that have been around for a while know that I love my dirty brushes. I did not ink up my brushes for either one of these flower, flowers. I just pulled out my dirty brushes and went to town. So easy peasy. Let's see, W plus nine did a great for using the hydrangea. Yes. Hydrangea and um, the hydrangeas are even um, because it's that big blossom, but there's a whole bunch of little teeny tiny ones that go on top of the big one. Use those little teeny tiny ones to go in with your other bouquets or go with the, you could put it in with the pansy or you do break up the teeny tiny ones and have like a little swag here and a little swag here. Like we talked about, like if you're going to use um, smaller flowers, you can do that and break it all up. Let's see here, especially this busy time of year. Very much agree. So thank you, Laura. Let's see, which set is the one on the right? This is Lovely Layers Wildflowers. Let me find it on my messy desk here. It is this set. It's really fun because there's like this kind of, I don't even know what that is kind of flower. There's this poppy looking flower that's more layering. And then there's this uh, like bluebell, blue bonnet looking one that is precious and adorable. But you could put all three on one card as I've done in the past. I don't have that card anymore to even show you. Or you could do like this and just have this nice, simple, little sweet card. This one would be another great one that's good for sympathy cards. Because it's just very simple, very sweet, just little card. All right. Okay, what is the first flower you made the card with? This one is the Lovely Layers Pansy. Yes. Okay, thank you guys for helping Miss Gail. Okay, are there any other questions? Simplicity. Let's see. You love the light. Yes. Super, super just a little sweet and simple. And these really, after I cut them out of the white paper, they really don't, you know, it, they don't take a whole long time to, to do anything fancy and blend or anything. Okay. Do you have any other videos like this? Bo, I don't, but if you'll, if you guys will email me, um, either at customer care at honeybeestamps.com or Kelly at honeybeestamps.com, if you have a request or a question that actually helps me to know how I can help you during a video or a live stream. Okay. All right. All right, Lisa, if you want to give us our winner for tonight, and then somebody mentioned like the busy time of year, I will say that we will be back on Wednesday for our normal live stream. But next week, the week of um, Christmas and the holidays, we're not going to have a live stream next week at all. So um, Rachel Harris, you are the winner. So I will see you back here on Wednesday. But we're going to um, all take a break next week. And so then we'll see you um, the week after that. All right. Rachel Harris, congratulations to Rachel. So, Rachel, if you'll email me, Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I am going to send you a gift card. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, you can email me here. If you have ideas that would help you and you want to see something in a live stream, you can email me here as well. All right, you guys. See you Wednesday and I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.